Patch 9.16 was just announced for League of Legends, and with this patch we have some really exciting changes. Aren't you tired of misleading sites offering you 24-7 coaching and guides from Tier 1 pros just to find out that it's all a lie? Then join us at Game Leap, where you'll find over 200 in-depth videos created by me and other top-rated challenger players. Getting a membership costs only a few dollars and gives you full access to all of our step-by-step -step courses. We are so confident that you'll love it that we'll issue you a full refund if you aren't completely satisfied. Check us out using the link in the description below. First and foremost, by far the biggest change this patch was a rework that is being done to Pantheon. This looks like it may be my favorite rework of the entire season, and I really enjoyed reworks like Mordekaiser and Kale. The main idea behind this rework was to give Pantheon more of a skill expression. They wanted to remove some of the point and click aspects in his kit while still giving him that damage reduction that was so core to his kit, his old passive. Pantheon's new W and his ultimate are basically just upgraded versions of what they used to be. His new E allows him to block any damage from a given direction, and his new Q is very similar to the old Q, except now it's AoE and a skill shot. Remember, this is just a very basic rundown of the new Pantheon. I did get a few chances to play him on the PBE, but I wanted to make sure that I had a complete understanding of the champion before we make more of an in-depth guide on him. It is pretty hard to say what tier he'd be placed in following the rework. I think he's going to be pretty good, but I have been wrong before. I highly recommend that you guys give the new Pantheon a try. Riot did a fantastic job with this rework, and it looks like it's going to be one one of my favorite reworks of all time. As I said before, this patch is full of action, and we can see that with the number one and two mid laner this patch both getting nerfs. Azir's going to be having a longer cooldown on his Q when it's fully maxed. This means he's not going to be able to move his soldiers around nearly as much in a fight. This should allow you to have more opportunities to get around his soldiers and onto him, especially before he's able to get 40% CDR. Although this is a decent nerf to Azir, this should not knock him down too much and I think he will still be a highly contested pick in the highest of elos. Now Corky is also receiving some pretty huge nerfs this patch, being the number 2 mid laner. I know that these changes don't look as though they're a big deal, but if we go through and we actually think about how these changes impact him and his build, then we can actually see how big they are. Corky utilizes AD so so well, this is because he uses both a trinity force and he uses crit. This means that he double dips on base AD, so a nerf to his base AD hits him twice as hard as it would hit most champions. He's going to be significantly significantly weaker at all stages of the game, especially when he has his Triforce and 50% crit finished. I don't think these changes will completely gut Corky, but he definitely will no longer be a top contested pick in my opinion. Another thing to keep in mind is that magic soaking tanks like Galio and Mundo are going to be seen a lot more this patch, which also further knocks down Corky on the tier list. I think Corky is still firmly in the A tier, but he might be knocked down to the B tier. There's a lot of movement with his champion in this specific patch. Speaking of Mundo, he's receiving some massive buffs this patch that may allow him to return as the king of the top lane. One of the reasons why Mundo has not been all too good in the past is because he is forced to max his W second in a lot of situations. In the past, he's had to make a conscious choice of either maxing his W and getting the tenacity and wave clear paired with that, or maxing his E and having the single target damage and dueling capability that goes with that. You're not going to have to worry about this anymore due to the fact that you're going to be receiving 30% tenacity at all ranks of Mundo's W instead of just maxed. This allows you to max Mundo's E second in every situation. On top of that, at max rank, 33% of Mundo's E cooldown is being shaved off. This is a huge deal. It means you're going to be getting a lot more ease in fights, allowing you to duel some of the Conqueror champions in the top lane that were harder to deal with earlier. Due to the fact that you're rushing a Sunfire Cape in a lot of your matchups, or at least a Bami Cinder, you're not really going to have to worry about that wave clear that you'd be lacking from not maxing W second. You also have the option of going a early Tiamat on Mundo, which when paired with an early E max, you have a lot of damage. There's going to be a lot of changes with Mundo this patch, and a lot of new builds are going to be popping up, so make sure to keep an eye on him for sure. I do believe that Mundo is going to be the best raw tank in the game, 
probably in the A or the S tier. Echo is receiving some buffs this patch, but honestly, they won't really do all that much. If this 10 damage was on his Q, they would be significantly better, but since it's on his E, these changes don't really do all too much for Echo. The CDR on his ultimate is wonderful, but keep in mind you're only going to be receiving that full 20 seconds off of the cooldown at level 16 and beyond. All in all, these changes aren't all too impactful for Echo. I think he will still remain in the A tier solidly. He is for sure a good pick as an AP assassin, but some of the picks that are meta in the mid lane right now just smash him, which prevents him from being in the S tier. Speaking of these picks that are especially strong into Echo, we have both Cassidy and LeBlanc being buffed this patch. The nerf to LeBlanc Q earlier in the season is being fully reverted. She's getting that 0.1 AP ratio back. This is a pretty big deal and it allows her to poke significantly harder and allows her to assassinate targets significantly easier later on into the game. These changes do not take away from AD LeBlanc top that will still be viable, but AP LeBlanc mid will be significantly stronger this patch as well. Kassin is also receiving additional flat damage on his W. He's getting 30 damage per rank, which at level 1 is almost doubling the ability's base damage. This is a huge deal because W is the ability that Cassidy maxes last, meaning the impact that he gets from this buff is huge. This will allow him to bully out magic damage melees. It will also allow him to burst low range mages significantly easier if he is able to get on top of them. This paired with an electrocute rune page might make it so that Cassidy returns to his dominant spot in the mid lane. The only thing that might stop Cassidy from reigning terror is the strength of LeBlanc and Azir this patch. Both of these champions do destroy Cassidy in the laning phase and make it so that he's not really able to get out of the laning phase easily. They are also able to match him in scaling, so Cassidy is not very good into those two picks. However, if these two picks start receiving a lot of bans, expect Cassidy to reign terror on solo queue. Ezreal is going to be receiving significant nerfs to his AP itemization. It appears as though Riot does not want you to be able to build Luden's Echo or Gunblade on Ezreal, and we see that with these nerfs to Ezreal's Q. 1.5 AP ratio off of a ability that is highly spammable is actually a pretty big deal. We may see a return to the Blade of the Rune King build that we are seeing on Ezreal in previous seasons, however, since Ezreal does have other AP ratios in his kit, he may not be opting for an AD build and he might just stick with the AP build that he currently has. He also will be significantly easier to pick in the laning phase if he misuses his E. With the increased cooldown on Arcane Shift, you should be able to punish Ezreal significantly harder in the laning phase, especially if he wastes this ability. This is good because Ezreal in the past has been allowed to be a dominant laner due to the fact that he's always able to get out with a second E. Perhaps these changes will make it so that Ezreal has to play the lane in a very conservative manner only using his E to escape ganks. Now, I do not expect these changes to affect Ezreal all too much. I still think he is an S tier ADC, one of the best in the game currently. The biggest thing that we might see happen is that Ezreal reverts back to a Blade of the Ruined King on hit build instead of his AP AD hybrid build. Now, let's move on to our duelists in the top lane. We have changes to Fiora, Jax, and Riven this patch. Riven is having the Q buff that she received a few patches back reverted, and it will just be a flat cooldown on her Q at all ranks. Thanks. This is a pretty big deal and it should bring her power level down to a more manageable level. The reason that these two seconds are so big at max level is because it means that she needs 40% CDR in order to cycle her abilities instead of being able to do it with 20. The fact that Riven could space out her first three Qs and then have them back up right away after the third Q was done with only 20% CDR was a big deal. The removal of this allows for significantly more counterplay to Riven in the laning phase before she is able to get that at 40% CDR. Don't worry, this change does not gut her, she's still able to cycle her Qs as long as she has 40% CDR, so she'll be able to teamfight in the late game. This change is mainly targeted at bringing down Riven's power to a more acceptable level. Riven is going to be landing in the S tier for this patch, however she is no longer the best top laner in the game, S++ tier. Players like Adrian and Viper will still definitely be forces to be reckoned with, 
but your average Riven player will be significantly easier to lane against now. Jax and Fiora are both receiving buffs this patch, and it looks like they're going to be the kings of the top lane for the time being. Fiora's bonus attack speed, when the ability is max, is almost being doubled, which is a huge deal. Her combo is going to be much quicker, allowing her to get her damage off significantly faster. This makes it significantly easier for her to land quick trades in the early game and back out when she needs to. Windows of opportunity to trade back with a short trade against this champion are going to go down significantly. This was her weakness previously. She was never able to land short trades well because you could always return the trade quickly before she'd be able to land her crit off of her E. Now, however, Fiora is going to excel in both short trades and extended trades, making her a menace in the laning phase while still scaling into an absolute monster. Fiora will probably land herself in the S tier for this patch, but we'll see if Jax is able to keep her down. Speaking of Jax, he has two seconds lower on his Q cooldown at rank 1. This is a pretty big deal because it is the ability that he maxes second, not first, meaning he's going to be able to lane against ranged champions like Kennen and Nico significantly easier. Jax was already very, very strong this patch, and this buff is just going to make him stronger. He was already in the S tier, and he will definitely remain in the S tier for this patch. Lux is receiving a buff to her W, which may allow her to return to the top tier as a support pick. This is a little bit hard to tell due to the fact that the support meta has shifted quite a bit since Lux was reigning supreme. Completely out of left field, we have a buff to Nocturne. I'm not sure where this is coming from, but he should have more attack speed when he blocks a spell, I guess. Realistically, these changes won't do anything for Nocturne. He'll be able to solo Dragon a little bit faster, I guess, but other than that, this really isn't what Nocturne needs in order to succeed as a jungler. I honestly don't think you'll even be able to notice the attack speed buff unless you actually do block a spell. Sejuani is receiving an adjustment. In exchange for a higher cooldown on her Q, which will hit her early game, she's going to be having a better late game with her passive being buffed. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure how to evaluate these changes, they shouldn't affect her gank all too much because she only uses her Q once in a gank, but perhaps team fighting will be significantly harder for her in the early game. I believe she will still be in the S or A tier 4 junglers, being one of the best tank junglers in the entire game. Shen is going to be receiving some very exciting changes to this patch that should allow him to dual champion significantly better. Now I don't think that these changes are going to be enough to push him forward, especially in solo queue, but we could potentially be seeing Shen in pro play, especially when Worlds comes along, so I am excited for that. Singed is receiving a buff to his late game, which gives him 10 more of each stat, which is actually pretty good for him. This should give him a little bit more survivability in a late game team fight so he doesn't just get melted by hyper carries and maybe will allow him to kill some more targets with a little bit more AP. Singed, however, is a very, very unique champion. I don't typically rate him very high on a tier list simply because his playstyle is completely different from every other champion in the game and his goals are completely different. This makes him hard to play, especially for somebody who doesn't really play Singed, but for all you singed one tricks out there, I definitely think that he's going to be in the A tier for this patch. Sign is receiving a teeny little buff this patch. It won't do anything, but it is good to see that he is receiving some attention. You will also no longer be punished if you decide to take Sign into the jungle as the reduced damage on monsters on his Q is going to be completely removed. Sivir's early game shove potential is going to be nerfed and this should drop her win rate significantly. This is simply because Sivir is usually the go-to for auto field ADC and if she's not able to just completely bully every other ADC out of the lane, then she's not going to be seeing nearly as much success. This does drop her down a tier for a lot of players, but for those of you that are much more versed with your Sivir, have more experience, you shouldn't see too much of a difference in her play. It will be harder to just AFK shove, but if you were never really doing that in the first place, you won't be seeing a difference. Silas is receiving some more nerfs to make it so that he doesn't jungle. It is very clear that Riot does not want Silas jungling at this point, so we will be completely taking him off any future jungle tier lists until something else changes. We do have some pretty big buffs to Syndra targeted at her Q and her E. Worlds is coming around so you can expect changes to Syndra, Ori, and Cass as we have always seen in the past. There's a reason why this trinity has existed for so long. These champions are the epitome of a control mage. As a result, pretty much every time Worlds comes around, these champions are going to be seeing significantly more popularity and and will be picked at least once or twice in the tournament. Sometimes they do last longer into the tournament, becoming a meta pick, but sometimes 
once they are phased out in the group stage. I expect Cinder to be seeing a lot more success in solo queue as well due to the fact that these Q buffs are pretty big, especially once you hit level 9. 15 flat damage on your E at all ranks also helps out a little bit with wave clear earlier on into the game, but with team fighting, not too big of a deal there. Tom Kench is receiving nerfs this patch, and these are a lot bigger than they might appear. Movement speed is something that every single champion uses and uses very, very well. So taking 10 full movement speed off of a champion is huge. I honestly don't think I've ever seen Riot take 10 movement speed off of a champion. Five is something that does happen occasionally, but 10, I'm not sure I've ever seen that in my entire career. I do expect this change to make it so that Tom is completely gutted, both in the top lane and support. You're not going to be able to run people down in the top lane, and you're not going Going to be able to escape ganks as support. On top of these changes, you're also going to have one second lower shield duration, which is just nuts. One full second of damage is a huge deal no matter what stage of the game you are in. I do expect Tom to be completely unplayable after this patch, and we probably won't be seeing him anytime soon. Yumi is receiving pretty big nerfs to her Q, but this does not address the real problem behind Yumi. While her laning phase won't be nearly as good, Yumi can still just survive survive, become untargetable, and make it so that their ADC never dies. Unless Riot specifically targets this, I don't think Yumi is going to be going anywhere. The damage that she had was just a bonus, but making your ADC unkillable is a massive deal. Ziggs is receiving some quality of life buffs, making his W deal more damage, as well as be a lower cooldown early on into the game. Late game, he's going to be able to clear more waves with his ultimate, which is awesome. It allows him to manage the side waves without having to actually move away from mid lane. I don't think these changes are enough to really push Ziggs into the meta, but he still is a good pick for those of you who just want to sit back and farm safely while managing side waves. Now, for those of you who did make it this far into the video, we have a fantastic reward for you. That's right, you and only you get to know the fact that biscuit delivery is gutted. Please, for the love of God, do not take biscuit delivery in your games. This rune is going to be completely worthless. It's not going to help you. There are so many better runes to take now, even if you're taking the inspiration tree. Now, this rune wasn't all too popular on anything except for ADC, so we will likely be seeing an alternative to inspiration secondary on a lot of ADCs soon. For the time being, I would recommend going back to the sorcery, absolute focus gathering storm, secondary that we were seeing before if you were taking that on ADC. Resolve is another option if you do want that safety with bone plating and either demolish or revitalize or overgrowth. I will be keeping an eye on what the highest rated ADC players are taking in runes on this patch, and I will definitely update you guys as soon as possible. That just about does it for today's video covering everything you need to know about patch 9.16. If you guys have been enjoying our content up until now, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. There we have hundreds of guides, all done by challenger players sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We have courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses, so if that's something that interests you, make sure to check us out using the link in the description below. As always, I hope you learned something valuable, and I will see you in the next one.